guys. Hope you're having a great Friday. I just want to make this quick video and we're going to move on to some news. Uh, I want to show you some of the builds I've been doing this week. As a matter of fact, every single one of them are the exact same almost. The machine on the right is my personal build. It's the machine that's going inside of the Rec Room Master's Cabinet, the two-player pedestal that I have had running for a while. But I sold the machine last week just because I didn't feel like building one. And this is now my sixth, if I count this one, Ryzen 5 that I've built this week. I've got, here's Sean's here that I have to put together. And I have another one arriving this afternoon that I have to put together. Now, the drives are already imaged, so it shouldn't take me very long. But I'm very surprised at how well, once everything is tweaked, these Ryzen's play. Um, I'm having no issues at all. This is the Dreamcast running at a 4K resolution. Uh, I've hopped through every single wheel. As a matter of fact, I was working on, I'm sure he's gonna comment below, I was working on this last night and decided to dig in on Hot Shots Tennis and got it properly working with the new PCSX2 emulator. So I'm gonna launch this guy. And I've made, um, I'm up to about 40 bezels now, system bezels. Everything's gonna work exactly the way it's supposed to. Now Hot Shots would always be extremely laggy, um, very choppy. It'll be fine up until the point the uh, you zoom in on the court. But um, yeah, I've got to play full speed. I'm trying to be quick here. I want to show you guys the a quick peek of the two-player pedestal. Um, I do have a lot planned, but I'm just going to hold it off till next week. Brian, I'm sure you're going to be happy, buddy. You've been after this game for a while. Alright, that's enough. So, it's playing. So, uh, the Ryzen 5's come in pretty cheap um, compared to an Intel NVIDIA build. What we have here is a, I normally would not recommend this case at all. This is just to fit inside of this pedestal. I'm running the uh, AMD Radeon, I mean the AMD Ryzen 5, 2400G with the Vega graphics. It's got a 3.9 gigahertz burst with a 3.5, four, I think it's four core, eight threads processor. I opted for the Gigabyte AB, 350N that has the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi built on. You got RGB controllers and much more. It's about $30 more than its non-Wi-Fi, non-Bluetooth motherboard. I've got 8 gigs of DDR4 RAM, 256 gig SSD, a 8 terabyte Iron Wolf. Um, there is a whole lot about this machine I would love to show off. I purchased the wrong case and I had to modify the case to handle a three and a half inch drive. This does not go here and this tray over here does not go here either. I had to uh, cut a few pieces. This is a 21 plus motherboard, I mean a case. I would not recommend this case. It was 50 bucks but it's just perfect enough to fit in the slot that I needed it in. But this is not vented at all, right here. This is just a straight plastic piece. So I'm using that. There's a whole bunch of cables in there for cable management. Over here is Sean's machine, very similar build. 16 gigs of RAM, no, he's got eight gigs of DDR4. That's what I have on this one. Ryzen 5, everything's the exact same. Uh, this is going in the Rec Room Master's Cabinet. That's going in the Rec Room Master's Cabinet. The two I previously shipped off yesterday. Rec Room Master's Cabinet. Let's take a look at this pedestal. pedestal. I've done a lot to this thing before we do the review. 
my wife has ordered uh, RGB lights. New. We're going to set up a a recording. I mean, a um, YouTube studio. We've got lights coming, new camera, all kinds of cool stuff. And so we're going to hold off until that stuff arrives. It should be here this weekend. Anyway, when I got the cabinet, I removed the Hap Suzo buttons. I got Ultralux LED buttons. You have the iPad Mini. You also have a uh, DirectX a DX input encoder boards in there as well. So you got a toggle switch on the back that you can hit, and it turns it from direct input to a 360 controller. So whenever you play those PC games, just hit the um, toggle switch. You've got the coin door. It's the power button. You've got the, the trays on the side for the 360 controllers. I have slots for uh, wireless Amtrak light guns. I'm not going to show you the back, but I'll tell you, there's a plate back there that sits flush that rises up, rises up over the board. You've got a keyboard, mouse, and a steering wheel. And this is the slot that I needed that machine to fit in. So it fits flush in there without ex you know, extruding from the back of the, the pedestal. But in here, I've got a 1080p HD 120 inch projector. So uh, this thing's pretty maxed out. I can't wait to show it off next week. Only thing uh, I'm waiting on is some kicker five and a quarters. We're gonna mount in the side of the panel and a 40 watt amp. So let's head on to some news, guys. All right, guys, we're just gonna cover a few things real quick. Um, in case you didn't know, the Home Arcade Systems new site is up. As time permits, I am uh, migrating new but tested content that's on my test server here into the live site. That's not really the way you do things, but um, I wanted to get it online and it already uh, just has 10 times more information than the previous site did. You have, uh, it pretty much covers everything. One thing that is really cool is you have a dynamic log now that you can see how much content has been updated. Uh, this is dynamic, so this gets fed every night about two o'clock from a cron script. On a side note, I do need a couple people who have a, a drive that has been updated or recently purchased within the last two to three months. I need uh, some help testing the update patch system. I'll go over that later on, but um, I did encounter one bug yesterday, small, but it was resolved. I've issued several test patches over the last week, and I've got thumbs up from everybody, so yay. The new site has, uh, it's going to have a, quite a lot of stuff for you, but every single thing that is going to be on here is a direct link. So what that means is no links to, uh, you know, affiliate pages, malware pages like Arcade Punks or wherever you go. All the data I have has been scraped and have direct links. For example, uh, one thing I wanted to talk about was Colpipe 78's 500 gig attract mode he released I think two or three days ago he also released a one gig patch yesterday now that is something he has been working on for a while and I thought it looked very familiar the, well not the front end but the structure and uh, I can tell when something came from me and yeah there's no denying it so but I'm glad he's migrated that across, let's see, Launchbox, Hyperspin, and the Track Mode. Now, if you're not aware of the Track Mode, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's another front end. It uses Rocket Launcher as its engine. And it's um, basically a Track Mode. It, it's, it's a movie. You know, I would like my uh, front end to be more responsive and be a lot more immediate than visual and while I have been looking forward to uh, 
testing a track mode out that he has been working on, I don't see myself migrating from Hyperspin to, or LaunchBox to anything else. LaunchBox's latest update really increased performance dramatically. But let's go ahead and take a look at Colpipe's uh, track mode. Okay, this is Cold Pipe 78's uh, track mode release. It's 51 systems, roughly 430 gigs. I'm on a two gigabit fiber. It took about eight hours to download, and it took eight hours and 22 minutes to extract on an HP micro server. Now, what he's done is he's taken the track mode, and he's using Rocket Launcher backend as his primary engine which is awesome that's exactly what I would do but um, I thought a lot of this stuff looked familiar but he's migrated this stuff uh, from I guess 2014 maybe 15 he's got some home arcade system files in there that he's running across hyperspin done a great launch box and now he's done a great track mode now we don't need all 430 gigs of it we can get rid of the roms directory we can get rid of the emulators directory we don't need the rocket launcher either or the arcade pc we can take everything here not that not that edit some config files redirect the databases to the d drive and now you can copy the cp78 front end and have an attract mode on your d drive for an extra 13 gigs, I believe. Um, now, it would take maybe an hour or two. I would love to uh, check it out if I had the time. Honestly, I don't have time to make this video. So, I have grabbed the direct link. Uh, you don't have to go to Arcade Punks and shift through the malware ridden links or anything else they want to infect you with. The direct links are below. You've got the torrent, and I'm going to rip this apart um, probably within the next week, maybe the weekend if it's easy enough, and release an independent version that you can just plug into an existing drive setup. Now, I noticed yesterday someone commented on a YouTube video on how to create a main database. If you want the main 202, main database of working titles only 
I have uploaded, I've packaged this and uploaded it. You'll see it is the name 202 working titles, created on September 29th. Now I know that you were having problems creating that, but I personally think that maybe um, either you skipped a step or that thread was still running and you thought that uh, maybe it had finished. You know, it does take a while to parse the main system list and everything else, but I created the main as well as all the genres and the extras. You can grab that link down below. I have something else too, guys, but I'll tell you what, I need to get these builds done. You guys have a great weekend, and hopefully we'll get our, our studio set up over the weekend. New lighting, new cameras, and we'll start making some really cool content. In the meantime, have a great weekend, guys.